Hello, my name is Fritz Kao, and welcome back again to my YouTube channel show, Factual Conspiracy. Tonight, let's take a journey into the belly of the beast. Big corporations, poisoned food, poisoned environment, and random other topics. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. My guest tonight, please introduce yourself. My name is Luke Best. I have a YouTube channel. I got a few videos posted on. They're uh, pretty cool. So go check them out when you get a second. Just type in Luke Vest in your search bar and it should bring me up. Very nice. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show tonight, Luke. Do you know um, what different types of videos do you like to make on your YouTube channel? Just so you could tell the listeners out there. Um, mostly, I specialize in top countdowns of weird stuff or uh, stuff that you wouldn't normally think about. Um, not necessarily common knowledge stuff. I do a bit of research on it and uh, put it out there so people can be more informed about stuff. Great, very nice. Uh, and you probably have a significant amount of videos that you load up every week so there's regularly scheduled program on there to yeah, absolutely. Channel. I like to try to usually load two to three videos a week. Very nice. I like to say I do the same, but come summer and whatnot, I'll be out playing. But then I'll have a whole bunch of neat videos, like the videos I've been uploading recently, of uh, my river trips on Michigan's Grand River and Michigan's Maple River. And my, lace, my latest video was our multiple, there's three of us, we took a little trip and the mascot for Fritz K.O. Vids, my dog Jaeger, came along <laughs> on a 14-foot Coleman canoe. We rode for three hours on Creepy Lake Erie all the way out to Turtle Island, which is an old British naval fort. And uh, it was a extremely interesting location. Feel free to check out my video. It's on this channel here, Factual Conspiracy, uh, Turtle Island Lake Erie video. Cool. And uh, long story short, we made it back safe and sound, still alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, um, I, I have uh, uploaded a significant amount of content, and Fritz K.O. Vids is actually coming up here on a, a one-year celebration. So I wanted to thank all you guys that are listening right now uh, for watching my videos, hitting the like button, subscribing to my channels, both of them. I really do appreciate you guys. It's getting now to where Factual Conspiracy is actually the the total amount of hits on Factual Conspiracy is about to surpass the total amount of hits on Fritz Kao Vids. I actually at one point did have close to 300,000 hits on Fritz Kao Vids, but that was when I was still ignorant to proper copyright law and whatnot, and I was violating proper copyright law in my videos. And basically all I was doing, I was using the content appropriately, but I wasn't uh, properly displaying whose content I was using in the credits and when I flash, flash the content, be that a picture, a song, or a video from a movie or whatnot. And that's a very complicated issue, and if you get into making your own YouTube videos, there's a lot of interesting videos 
that you guys should check out on YouTube by other people, not myself, that explain some of the ins and outs that you probably wouldn't be familiar with unless you uh, were went to school and were somewhat educated on copyright law. Mm -hmm. All right, now long, long story short, uh, one year's Fritz Kale bids. Thanks a whole bunch, guys. I'm actually going to be having um, a giveaway here for my thousandth subscriber. Long story short, man, I love you guys. I love you guys watching my stuff, so I want to give away some stuff to you guys. It's actually really cool to show my appreciation to you guys, and you guys don't have to do nothing but just keep watching my stuff. And even in the future, I'm going to plan more things like that, too, where I can give you know, give you guys some cool, neat little pieces of history as my way of saying thank you for watching my channel, and I appreciate it. All right, so moving along here, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some interesting corporations. I'm going to go ahead and, and start this off here, Luke, and feel free to jump in here and there as you would like. All right, um, first interesting story uh, that I have to talk about here is actually the McDonald's Corporation. Uh, and this was <clears throat> this little piece of information I'm about to share with you guys was just brought to light to me in the last recent year. All right, so McDonald's is a corporation, just like many others that exist in, you know, this nation we call America here, you know. Anyway, long story short, they weren't the original owners, the corporation that owns McDonald's now today. Originally, it was two guys. And I think they might have been brothers. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. It happens. Long story short, I think they were the McDonald's brothers. And they had one store. And they had a, a good idea. And they had a good burger. People liked it. So the, the corporation that was soon to own McDonald's came along one day and offered them uh, a vast amount of sums for their, uh, if there was a chain at that point, it was a small chain and a few stores. And... The McDonald's brothers sold, the original owners sold uh, the McDonald's name and the franchising rights to these, this corporation that owns McDonald's today. And the only thing they wanted was to be able to have their original burger shop that they opened up together so they could keep it in the family and keep it going. And uh, they, they had uh, been thriving there for such a long time on their, on their own. And uh, they were like within the community and whatnot. But as the years went by, uh, the vast corporation that was McDonald's grew up and just started to hate the fact that they had their business and they were doing so well. So they opened a McDonald's across the street from the original owners of McDonald's, the only now store. And they drove that McDonald's out of business. And today, when you purchase McDonald's food, and you consume it. Um, me, myself, personally, it's not the same food I was consuming in the 80s growing up from McDonald's. I mean, it is totally different. The taste, the textures of the meat, uh, it's almost like a Franken food of sorts. And when you read the things online that 70% uh, of McDonald's cheeseburgers, the, the actual patty itself contains a compound that you find in, in styrofoam and then I'm sure we've all heard of pink slime and all the, the various other different things I mean most people don't know that in each patty in a double cheeseburger you know the dollar McDouble or whatnot what have you each patty contains more than enough salt for the average human being for three days so when you have a couple of those for let's say 10 to 20 years it's a recipe for a heart attack and the, the people, the, the wonderful corporation that is McDonald's that ran the original owners, their last store, out of business, out of nothing more than spite, they know this and uh, they could change this. But, you know, putting that amount of salt on that little burger patty is actually addicting. And that's why they do it. I'm sure there's probably some interesting things that you've heard about McDonald's that you might want to talk about. <clears throat> yeah, actually, uh, I've heard, uh, I haven't confirmed this for myself because I haven't taken nearly enough time to confirm it, but I have been told that the, uh, the whole thing with the styrofoam um, 
in their food makes it so that their food doesn't grow mold no matter how long it is sitting out. I've seen uh, some things, some pictures and some other stuff interesting on uh, the internet with before, in between, and after for like a year's time span and nothing touches it. There's no mold on it. Animal, or little bugs and stuff don't eat it and devour it like they would normal you know home cooked food which is odd because I have yet to find something that you can go to the grocery store and buy cook and leave sitting out for any amount of time really that doesn't start collecting flies and growing mold and stuff so that kind of makes me think what exactly is that doing to my body? And you know, I'm sure all of us have found a McDonald's fry discarded from a kid that's just been laying there in that back seat on the floorboard of your car <laughs> for several <laughs> weeks, if not a month to half a year. You find it when you vacuum. I don't. Love Michigan. The winters are so cold. Really, you know, you grab the big stuff out. You're not worried about hand vacuuming in the dead of winter. You know, mm -hmm. and ten below and whatnot. Long story short. You find this old French fry on the back of your floorboard or your back seat of your car, and it looks almost just the same as the day you would have purchased it from Mickey D's out the window. I mean, it's not no longer bendable and pliable as hard and stiff, but the way it looks mm -hmm. is totally the same. Absolutely. I know I've personally, I have done that. Clean my car out and be like April or something and I go out finally after the long cold winter because I hate the cold I don't clean my car nearly as I should when it's cold out I don't think anybody does and going out and you know I got a three-year-old she loves her some McDonald's man you go out and go to clean the back seat out and down in the crack you know you find an old bit of a hamburger bun or a french fry something like that and you're going dude that's really gross but at the same time it's not because it still looks edible. it still looks okay yeah uh, uh, another corporation that really i found just to be slightly disturbing even far more than mcdonald's is actually uh bear they actually made um a, a, a hemophiliac medication where they were using other people's blood as part of the ingredient to make the medication for some reason you know I'm not a scientist I don't know how that works it's all on the internet you can check it out and uh, they were actually unfortunately and, and with their own knowledge they eventually had realized this and were still dumping the medicine out on the populace of Europe because this was mainly sold to people in third world countries in Europe but they were infecting people with HIV. And, and when they found out, instead of recalling the product, they ended up trying to flood the market with it and sell it at cheap prices to unload it before it became, you know, mass hysteria that, that they had been infecting people with HIV. And now, we'll hear about President Clinton, you know, a lady performing oral relations on him in the White House. But we won't ever hear that story spread all over the front page news, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That Bear was giving people HIV. Yeah. You know, and then you look currently into the current news, I mean, hear about Johnson and Johnson. Now, they make an insane amount of lotions, not just for babies and shampoos and everything else, but their corporation, you can Google the name of it, <laughs> makes an insane amount a significant portion of our hygiene products and they have been found to have been put in ingredients in their products that have led to people getting cancer this is recently and it's the same story over and over what were they doing they were trying to flood the remainder of their product on the market so they could sell it all and make their profits and then now it's a fact that everyone knows that they knew that that product led to people eventually getting the cancer. These are products that were given to babies, adults, everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone. And I'm sure we've all used them at some point in time in our lives. 
and this is a corporation, you know, that we've trusted, you know what I mean, that presented itself to our society as, um, you know, a wholesome company, you know, like, we're here for babies, you know, help you to have the years grow up and whatnot, give you a nice shampoo and blah, 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 you know what I mean, they all seen their commercials on TV, Johnson & Johnson. A family you know I mean? company. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, long story short is, they're giving people cancer. And when they find out that they're giving people cancer, not only do they not only try to cover it up, but they continue to do so. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about Johnson & Johnson? What does that tell you about McDonald's? They give people cancer too. You know what I mean? And these corporations know what they're doing. They're only concerned with profits. And I mean, this shouldn't be necessarily a big surprise to anyone listening. That I mean, who knew, right? Money makes the world go around. Rich people Imagine. control all of our lives. The big surprise, right, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, I, I hate to say it, but it is true. Yep, absolutely. I remember seeing a thing uh, not too long ago that I found really disturbing. Um, they, they were actually doing a study uh, without the consent of um, the patients that they were doing the study on, mostly um, mostly poor uh, African American males from other countries, that they would find out that they were infected with syphilis and the, their, uh, the people that were supposed to be treating them would tell them, oh you just have bad blood, the symptoms are inevitable. Correct so that me if I'm wrong, study. but it sounds like you're talking about the Tuskegee experiment. Yep, absolutely. All right, continue. And uh, so they told these people that they have bad blood and their symptoms are inevitable. And they studied them for, I believe it was like 22 years that they studied these. They had 399 subjects. 22 years later... Out of those 399 original subjects, they had nearly half of them had died from syphilis. I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere near half. Now, these experiments started <laughs> somewhere in the early 1900s, like the 1930s or so, and they went on forever yeah. to the 1970s when yep. some of the last experiments were conducted and finally put a halt to that. And I believe... It was the Senator Frank Church, the Church Committee, that actually investigated the elements of the CIA for the MK Ultra, and they let him into some of these crazy, horrible things they were doing, like the Tuskegee experiment. Yeah. And we've all seen, uh, I, I made a video about MK Ultra, where they have a heart attack gun. Mm -hmm. Frank Church dragged these CIA guys in front of his committee and made them produce this heart attack gun, and they admitted it. Right in the video, and I have a clip of it in my MK Ultra video where they admitted that they have a gun in the 1970s that they could shoot a silent dart that would kill a person with a heart attack and dissolve in them too. They even said. I I, <laughs> I actually I, I did some research on that the heart attack gun as they called it, and what it actually was was they used a three millimeter bullet that was made of ice. The inside of the ice had um, some neurotoxin of a puffer fish that regardless of your physical condition, whether you were in great physical shape or poor health, it would force you to have a heart attack. And the half-life of this poison made it so that by the time they got you in for an autopsy, it would already be completely out of your system. It was perfectly untraceable. And it would leave you with the tiniest little red dot on your skin, almost completely unnoticeable. It was, it's, it was a fantastic design that they came up with, but it's just terrifying because if you look at even in the current events, as far or as close as 2012, I believe, they had a fellow that had posted some things um, saying he was going to produce proof that uh, President Obama's birth records were illegitimate and then 
somewhere in the neighborhood of a week after he had made them claims when he was supposed to produce them, the guy was in great physical shape, nothing wrong with him, went to the doctor regularly. All of a sudden, he's walking down the street and collapses and dies Breitbart. from a heart attack. Yes. That was Andrew Breitbart. Yep. Yeah. And then they had Michael Hastings, the reporter. He yep. was driving down, and I believe it was a Mercedes Benz or BMW, and that just spontaneously exploded, and then the engine was found almost a block away from the car. Yeah. I mean, just a lot of, you know, he hit a tree in his car stand, the engine is a block away from his car, and it's just engulfed. In what a firefighter reported was an uh, inappropriate amount of gulf of flames. He said it looked like an explosion. Yeah, well, I, I've i actually seen a few things on how explosions work with cars. And you know how you, you've, everybody's seen them action movies where, you know, they get in, they start the car, and it just explodes in a massive ball of fire and Another stuff. Another prime example is the bad guy leaves the gas station after robbing it. He throws the lit cigarette down into a puddle of gas and it blows up the gas station. Yeah. It's just like it goes in with a lot of the lies we're taught in history and everything else. They don't present things in the movies, especially those type of things, in, a, in, a, in an accurate way because they won't, don't want people to recreate those. You know what yeah. I mean? They're not going to show you how to start an explosion, but it doesn't it's definitely like not real. Explode. Yeah, and that definitely didn't seem to be what it was claimed to mm -hmm. have happened to Michael Hastings. And it's highly suspect, you know, oh, what yeah. they were investigating. I mean, this, this merger of corporation and government, it's almost like these corporations will hijack rogue, you know, will become the rogue elements of our government, the same ones, like Alan Dulles, head of the CIA, where JFK mm -hmm. fired in the invasion of the Bay of Pigs. Yeah. I think it's highly inappropriate that he was made the chairman of the investigation into whether or not JFK's murder was a, a government uh, plot. Because if it was, more than likely, Who Dulles better? would have been one of the more upset individuals in the government that would have been more than likely <laughs> responsible for his demise and would have had the power and the connections within the CIA to pull off something of the sort. And Who then, better to pick to cover something up than the guy that was more pissed off than anybody else, right? Also, for sure. <laughs> and then to put him in charge of... The committee that was investigating JFK's death did not only insult JFK and his family members and everything that he stood for, but also was the final kibosh on covering everything up. Because if they would have had someone who was really biased, more truths would have been revealed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's highly suspect that Lee Harvey Oswald was shot immediately by mafioso Dallas leader Jack Ruby. You know, yeah. they didn't have custody 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The way he was shot on camera, on TV, and everything, just the whole surrounding of the whole events just I, doesn't make any sense. And especially what Jack Ruby said when he was locked up in prison, you know, or, you know in jail, waiting mm -hmm. trial and whatnot for doing that. I find it really suspect that the JFK assassination happened shortly after he shut down the project that the CIA was trying to put into effect for acts of terrorism against their own country. Yes, they had a That's plan to, they had a plan, Operation Northwoods, they had a plan to hijack two planes, or several planes, and remotely control these planes on a later day and fly them into a, a target of significance and to blame it on some other external element on to teams. generate another war. So they, you know, the rich, the rich elitists, mm -hmm. we don't realize this, you know, they own all the corporations that mass produce and manufacture and they profit from all the arms, all the tanks, all the planes, all the boats, all the ships. Mm -hmm. Everything, every single stick of troop will carry an army that's manufactured by these same rich people that pay for these politicians that start these wars for their benefits, for their own profits, for their own bank accounts. And at the same time, 
most of them own all these banks and they're bankers too, just like the Federal Reserve is a private institution and it has owners. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they scan the profit. Oh, we yeah. We can print a currency and it automatically is issued with a debt attached to it. There's not enough currency in circulation to ever pay that debt. Mm -hmm. It's a simple fact. If anyone could prove me wrong uh, without wanting to just blatantly insult me for my opinion, feel free to talk to me like a normal individual in the comment section, and I will respond and conversate with you appropriately if you disagree with that statement. I'd like to hear explain to me exactly how that's supposed to work, that we could ever pay off that debt. Yeah, I completely agree, because I've, I've done a little bit of research on that, actually. Uh, I've, done, I've done a little bit of research on a lot of things, uh, but the uh, as far as the money system goes, the way that I understand it is there's never as much actual money in circulation as there is debt in circulation. It's uh, it's kind of a mathematical equation that you you have to go through a whole lot of stuff to come up with. But from what I've read and what I understand, it's called a, a fractional reserve banking. And so what banks are allowed to do. I mean, 70% of currency that's in existence functions this way, what I'm about to explain to you. What banks are allowed to do is if they have $1,000, they can turn that into $10,000 and issue it to loans to people. And so now when you take these loans, you have to pay them back in interest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is how banks and corporations, people who own banks, become so rich because they are able to create money out of nothing. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Absolutely. And then they're able to, when we get into depression areas, they're able to use this money that they created out of nothing to buy up everybody's everything for nothing. You get what I'm saying? With, with something that's created out of nothing. So they get a real, you're, you're real tangible goods. Like, you know what I mean? You can't, you lose your job, you can't pay your bank payment or your car payment, you lose your car. You lose all the money. And if it was a fair system, they would show up because they're getting their asset back. I mean, obviously, you would have to come to some sort of agreement on how much of the asset is and how much you should pay, but you shouldn't necessarily have to come off with all the cash. You know, when you default on something, you should get some cash back, probably, if you mm -hmm. maintain that item and it's still resellable. Yeah. Long story short, we could go <clears throat> on and on about the, the inaccuracies and unfairness of our uh, monetary system, but I'm sure... Most people are quite aware how inappropriate our system is and realize that our super debt now is to a point where our government will probably try to default on our U.S. currency and uh, put it into retirement and come across, come out with some new type of currency called the Amero. I mean, uh, we have the, the transnational agreement and uh, now we have these new laws like the TPP that they just pushed forward, and that's going to give them the direct uh, right to bypass Congress and just push laws into effect that benefit corporations directly. And this is a really, I hate to say it, I think it's sad times for our future. And the, the only way we can turn this around is by informing people. And now we, we can sit around and talk about stuff. That's uh, ultra controversial, like aliens and uh, uh, paranormal subjects all day long, and those are interesting. And uh, me and me and you and the, our viewers here tonight love those subjects, and that's fine. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Now, when we're trying to pull people in that are new to this, like I'm talking about, I'm talking to listeners out there. When you're trying to maybe inform someone who is not informed with some interesting fact that you think is important to their life, like I do with you guys on a, you know, a weekly, bi-weekly basis here and there with my YouTube videos that I upload. You need to make sure what you're telling is factual. And you need to make sure that it's not controversial. I mean, when, when you just talk about some of these different interesting things like Operation Northwoods, mm -hmm. that's almost too unbelievable, even though you can Google it. Mm -hmm. Here's something interesting that you can always tell people to do. The government has a website called Government Declassified Documents, and it has documents like, you know, the 
government's documents for JFK are going to be held to 2025. Yeah. It'll be pretty ancient by the time that comes out. Mm -hmm. Long story short is that as these documents become declassified, you can go and check these out. People do check, check these documents out. They copy them and they post them on the internet. And you'll find an extremely amount of disturbing things in it. And, uh, yeah, you pride yourself on the watch list, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here, here's the one thing you got to realize. In this day and age, people that are informed and spend a significant amount of time informing themselves are significant people of interest to our government. And throughout history, they always tell the tale. Who are the first people to go? The teachers, the intellectuals, the mm -hmm. scholars, the free thinkers. And if we do fall into a realistic totalitarian system, some sort of a dictatorship, you know, if, if what we know is America and our uh, republic and our, our freedom is actually 100% completely lost, that's probably what's going to happen because that, that is the tale that history tells time and time again. Mm -hmm. You, when you're looking at these documents that you're talking about from uh, this website, you can see some of the stuff from history and you go through these things and they're, some of them are, they're uh, fairly detailed and pretty mind-blowing stuff that you're reading about. And then you look at the stuff that's happening currently, and you can see reoccurrences happening of some of this stuff. It's you know, crazy. It's really sad, too, because, you know, you get drugged in front of some court for some court date uh, for whatever it might be. It might not even be criminal. It could be civil. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? These things happen. And you lie to the judge. I mean, you will go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. Now, when our government lies to us, that's just politics as usual. Yeah, that's normal. And the sad thing is, is that our whole government, our way of life, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but it's true and it's a fact based upon all the information that I possess, is that our government has been hijacked. I can't tell you exactly when it happened because it's been this way for quite some time, maybe mm -hmm. before World War One. Probably Abraham Lincoln was probably one of our last real presidents. And then, you know, you get a guy like JFK, tricks his way into the system. His father was a bootlegger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they had significant funds to pay for his campaigns and probably made back room dealings, which is why he became eventually president out of nowhere and why when his assassin was shot, the mob came in to take him out because there was probably backroom deals with the, the Joe Kennedy, JFK's father, mm -hmm. made with the mob to give them, you know what I mean, kind of a skate on things. And what did JFK and his brother Bobby do? All they did was attack the mob. And they're the reason that the mob has, was known before then no longer exists to this day in America. Mm -hmm. It's one of the great things that JFK is known for doing is cleaning up the mob, cleaning up the streets. Mm -hmm. Now, long story short, they didn't do probably what they were supposed to do when the mob backed them and probably helped grease some hands and make some backroom dealings to make sure JFK became president. And that's why Jack Ruby was probably sent in to finish up and clean up the job when he shot Oswald. And that connection, you can find it. I mean, it's not a fact. This is a hypothesis of mine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still, it's there. It's a fairly well-informed Why hypothesis. would some mob boss come down from Dallas and shoot or come, yeah, why would, why would some mob boss, Jack Ruby, shoot Lee Harvey Oswald? You know what I mean? He was just so passionate and enraged that he had to kill this man for being president is the cover story. But I mean, long story short, <clears throat> mafiosa people see all kinds of horrible things. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They're not moved to passion on too much that doesn't probably involve them in a direct and personal way. Hey, I, I can't remember the last time, <clears throat> for me anyways, I can't remember the last time that I heard about any kind of criminal, which is basically exactly what these people are in the, the mob. I can't remember the last time I heard about 
one of them liking government officials and you know supporting everything that they're doing so it would make sense to me why would somebody who is in this kind of lifestyle feel that passionately about this person getting killed when they didn't they there's no possible way that they like that person to start with yeah, there's a lot of things that can be said about JFK's okay, murder but the, the number one depressing thing to me and if you can catch an unedited video which is hard to do you can see in the video that the driver of the car looks back before JFK shot the second time you know the kill shot the mm -hmm. headshot that we're all familiar with he leans back into the left you know like mm -hmm. Kevin Costner said in the JFK movie performance that he looked back at JFK and then turns and slows the car down in, to almost a stop. Then the headshot comes. Mm -hmm. Then he takes off. Mm -hmm. Now, your president's life's in danger. You're a Secret Service official. If people are shooting at you, first thing you're supposed to do is hit the gas and jam on out of there. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to slow to a stop and get the, leave the president in the kill zone. I mean, everybody with common sense or even has been to a boot camp basic training and watched a military, a decent military movie in their life knows that as a fact. Mm -hmm. So, some interesting things for you guys to think about this evening. Um, corporations suck. That's why, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're for themselves, obviously, but there are some decent ones out there. Um, I like uh, Newman's. The, the movie guy. Yep. They make the, the salad dressings yep. and spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. And they give a significant amount of their proceeds to charity. Oh, yeah. A large amount. I believe it's half or more. Mm hmm Yep, that's a really good company. Um, Paul Newman, he was a movie actor, was the, I believe he was the guy that created their uh, corporation. If I'm not mistaken. It's his face that's on the and, label. Yep. And they have, I mean, I wouldn't say it's my absolute favorite salad dressing, <laughs> but they're good. And they are a significant contributor to a lot of, um, a lot of things that help other people, not just helping themselves. They're about more than just themselves. So I, I agree with you completely on that. It, it's a good corporation that's about more than just money. And they're not the only ones. There's other ones out there. But unfortunately, the vast majority of these corporations don't have the best intentions for Americans. And their only intentions are is more profits for themselves. And um, what do they do with these profits? What, what does Wall Street do with these profits? I mean, we bail them out. They give themselves million dollar bonuses with our mm -hmm. hard earned work for tax paying dollars. I mean, what kind of message does that say to the average Joe? You work hard your whole life, you get in a bad situation. F you average Joe, you can lose everything. Mm -hmm. But the rich fat cats at GM or the rich fat cats, you know, on Wall Street, they need to bail out. You gotta help them out. Because they still help stimulate the economy. You know what economy they help stimulate? The economy that Fs you out of your home. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They take... Thomas Jefferson even said himself, one day, the grandchildren of the American forefathers that fought to make this country theirs will wind up homeless. The very nation... That, you know they fought for and he knew that he knew the banks would grow up and around us all and take everything away from us because it's not that the people of that day necessarily would it's that they did and they always do mm -hmm. and they've succeeded through our own ignorance and this was a planned thing you know what i mean they first attacked education mm -hmm. it was taught once upon a time in schools that everything that happened in history was because Someone conspired for it to happen. Mm -hmm. Hence the title of my show, Factual Conspiracy, because it was once upon a time taught to us. 
Because there is such a thing as a conspiracy. Now in the mass media and the news, people that ask questions like myself and like you and like many others, like uh, Raven Brooks, like Ray Dennis Davis, ask questions like, you know, what happened in 9-11? Why was there thermite found all over, you know, ground zero? Why did Building 7 collapse? Why did Larry Silverstein take out such a large sum amount of insurance just a month or two before it all happened? Why was there an FBI agent? I can't remember his name. Boy, I wish I could because this is one of the lesser heard facts of information about 9-11. There was an FBI agent running around saying that people were going to fly planes into the World Trade Center or try to blow them up. I can't remember, but he said for a fact the World Trade Center. And he made it his life pursuit to run around and try to do as much as he could to stop it from happening. He was found dead in the rubble of the World mm-hmm. Trade Center on 9 11, you know, shortly after. Now, I'm pretty sure that's the last place he was ever going to be. Mm-hmm. I, I don't make a habit of going places that I know are going to be destroyed. And then you look at Bush, <laughs> who was there. Well, his father, you know was the head of the CIA and worked for the CIA and has been was in Dallas the day JFK was murdered. And his father, Prescott Bush, was caught laundering money for the Nazis. And the Rockefellers, through one of their subsidiaries, had sold the Nazis a significant vast amount of petrol, or it was an additive to their petrol. They, they, their, their uh, machinery could not run. Their engines could not run without this additive, and that pushed the world war on for another year or two. Just that sales right there. Mm-hmm. It is a fact that um, rich people have funded both sides and s- stand to benefit, you know, greatly from the profits that they've gained from selling arms and from the vast sums amount of territory. You know, when you get two people fighting, mm-hmm. it's called divide and conquer. You know what I mean? You get them to tear each other up, and then you, the small army, can come in, or mercenaries, or whatnot, and take whatever you want Mm -hmm. during and after the chaos. And that's what's happened in the Middle East right now. And a lot of people don't realize that. I mean, yes, there's real issues there. There's real conflicts. There's real problems. We're not there solving any of them. I'm going to tell you that much. We're causing most of them. We sacrifice our young Americans' lives for the benefit of rich people just to make a buck. Mm-hmm. And most people are too ignorant to even see it. And that's a shame. Absolutely. I, uh, I have some friends that are in the military and I've spoken with, uh, actually my cousin is overseas right now and I've spoken with him and he's he tells me all the time that Things over there are so screwed up that they're not solving anything. Why have, why have these people's lives at stake when you're not doing anything? One thing I know about Afghanistan, after talking to a gentleman from there, is as much as people didn't like the Taliban, one thing people liked about the Taliban, and this is not the same thing as Al-Qaeda. Mm-hmm. Right? People got to realize that. This was a government in Afghanistan, good or bad, here's their government. Mm -hmm. And one thing they did do is they did not allow people to grow poppy, to sell poppy. And when you think about that, you think about the history of CIA and the Iran-Contra conflict where they let the Contras mass-produce crack cocaine and sell cocaine and flood it in the streets of South Central LA and create the crack epidemic that ravaged Streets and ghettos all across America, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, it didn't just stay in the African American community, you know what I mean? It hit white suburbia, and that's when it became a problem, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Before yeah. that, it was okay because that's exactly what they wanted to do. It was mm-hmm. destroy black America. Yep. That's a whole nother show all together. <laughs> Absolutely. Long story short, but the point I'm trying to make currently is that they were over in Afghanistan. He went over to Afghanistan to throw the Taliban out. They didn't care about anything they did other than the fact that they destroyed all the poppy fields and was not letting the, you know, the vast producer of heroin before that that it was 
I mean, I think I've read somewhere that 80 or 70 percent of the world's heroin supply comes out of Afghanistan now. You know, our troops will admit that they're over there guarding these fields. You know, mm-hmm. it's a crop. Cash crop. You know? Right there. Yep. Insanity. It's all about money. It's all it's ever about, you man. Feel if, uh, you know, you grew up being told, you know, that everything you did mattered and your land of the free, and then you went into the military to serve your country, and they sent you thousands of miles away where you watched your buddies and your friends that you made while you short time in boot camp get blown to pieces in front of you, and you had to sit there and guard a poppy field. So not even the people in Afghanistan benefit from that, just the little warlords. Mm-hmm. Are the ones who directly benefit from that. Yeah. And we're Absolutely. helping them for what reason? Money. Almost but, like our CIA sells drugs. Mm-hmm. Well, they in the they've past definitely they've helped done other. It. They've definitely helped other individual <clears throat> groups sell them. They uh, in the past they've run drugs from Cuba into uh, California to. Basically, propagate the war. They wanted to get support from the Americans to try to invade Cuba. So the CIA helped Cuba import drugs into California. It's not too far fetched that they'd be in bed with some uh, heroin dealers from Afghanistan, I don't think, after that. You see, the number one thing with JFK and the number one problem he had with the CIA is they are their own entity within our government that's accountable to no one. And that's why the Frank Church committees, you know, a a concerned group of senators and politicians came together to investigate the CIA and their wrongdoing. And what they found was extremely terrifying. Mm. And that just scratched the surface. Oh, yeah. The head of the CIA had been caught at the time destroying immense amount of files, and the only reason we know about the MK Ultra program today is because they couldn't even do that appropriately. So these rich men have all these horrible schemes, and though they can kill our heroes, and they can sweep everything underneath the carpet, is that they're still all evil and obsessed with their own egocentricities that they can't even clean up their own messes 100%. And that's why some people that come along here and there are able to pick up these little pieces of information and tie everything together eventually. Mm-hmm. Even though it may take 50, 60 years later and the guys are dead. It helps paint a picture and help you understand what's going on today when you know the true and accurate, at least as accurate as you can get history. And it's nothing like what we're taught in school. Oh, yeah. I... I read a bit of information online about uh, the MK Ultra stuff, and I found it interesting that in '73, um, the guy—I don't recall his name right now off the top of my head—had um, a whole host of files that they destroyed. They destroyed this big mass of files that held huge bits of just gruesome information about people that were unwilling from 80 different hospitals and I think that's exactly what I'm talking about it was the director of the CIA at the time I can't remember his name but there's a classic quote he had to say where he was pretty much just insulting all of us as individuals yeah and he was busted in in 73 he was uh, destroying all of these files when they busted him And the files that they still have that have been declassified that you can see are gruesome enough, let alone the actual gruesome stuff, the more gruesome things that he was destroying so that you couldn't see them. That kind of takes me to a point where I, it kind of builds distrust in these agencies because who, who is holding them accountable, man? There's nobody holding them accountable. They're not accountable to anybody but themselves. And when you're accountable to nobody but yourself, everything becomes basically animalistic. You can do whatever you want. And that's why I say, Luke, you know, that it's our government and our way of life has been hijacked by these criminals 
because they're not accountable to anyone. Anytime that they are made accountable or someone tries to make them accountable, they kill that individual. You know what I mean? To protect mm -hmm. themselves. And uh, it seems wild to actually that we're talking so candidly and so honestly about this show because you really do have to be careful what you say. And uh, we've painted a pretty accurate picture here for you folks of exactly what probably the number a lot of the number one problems are here in America today and the cause of them and the families that are behind them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, I don't know. I'm actually really happy with the show and our, our random topics really trailed <laughs> off pretty nice and went in a decent direction. And, uh, Pretty much, long story short, we, our politicians the, of recent years have just been giving more, passing more and more laws and supporting more and more laws that have been passed that do nothing but empower corporations more and more and more. And pretty soon before we know it, we're all going to wake up to slaves to corporations or not, you know what I mean? You're going to get your social security check from Applebee's. You know <laughs> what I mean? And you're going to go to the dentist at Target, you know? And you're going to be a slave to these corporations. And that's really sad because you know, that's not, you know, human beings are just not supposed to be slaves to one another. I mean, that that's the sad fact. I seen an interesting Facebook post the other day. It says so. You don't think. The human being is in the average human being is intelligent enough to govern himself, but one average human being is, would be appropriate enough to govern over a million others. You know what I mean? And when you wrap your mind around that, you know what I mean. Pretty much all we really need to function appropriately with one another is you don't need a leader. You need a set of rules, almost like the Ten Commandments. You know what I mean? With clear and cut consequences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You shall not do harm to one another for no reason whatsoever. Depending on what harm you do, there'd be a level of consequences. You know what I, I mean? I completely agree. I agree with the Bible when it goes with the eye for an eye. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some people might think that's harsh. Murder shouldn't be murder and whatnot and things of the nature. But honestly, guys, people that don't agree with me on that, is if you not don't have intentions to go out there and murder people, what is the problem with that? I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you do have intentions to murder someone, you're definitely unsafe for society. You know, in society, our society originally was designed, you know, for more to be outstandingly morally uplifting and family driven. You know what I mean? A lot of people say the notion of a Christian society is complete pure and utter bullshit, you know, Christian America. But people don't realize the people that founded this country were Christians, up to 15 different hundred sects. And each one was telling the other one that they were going to hell for this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. And they were the only ones that were going to heaven. Now, 1,500 different ones. Our forefathers, the brave and Intelligent individuals that they were realized that everybody couldn't have what they wanted mm -hmm. unless our number one and most important thing was freedom. You, you can't have everything that everybody wants unless you first have freedom. And then everybody can get what they profess that they need to have and everyone can be happy. You don't have to like what everybody else wants to do, but you got to realize it's their that choice. For them, it's not even that. For you to be free to do whatever it is you as a person wants to do, you have to support not only that, but what everybody else wants to do. Because mm -hmm. you can't be a Buddhist. You can't be a Christian. You can't be a Jewish person without freedom. You know what I mean? And that's what matters the most. And a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that. But it's not your religion. It's your freedom. Because without true, freedom, yeah. you can't have your religion. Yeah, and you are absolutely right. You, first and foremost, you have to be American. 
and then you can be whatever else you want to be because without being able to be American, you don't you don't possess that freedom. Everybody is always saying we have a democracy. I mean, if you really Google what a democracy is and then figure out exactly how our government operates in a true democracy, people vote on ideas, not other people. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yep. And so what we have is a plutocracy, I mm -hmm. believe. But neither that nor the other matters because this was not ever supposed to be a democracy because the democracy is one step away from socialism. Mm -hmm. What this is is a republic. We are all free individuals of the Republic of America. You get what I'm saying? And this whole premise has been lost on a lot of individuals. And, you know, I was insulted the other day by YouTube trolls. Hey, it happens. I don't mind. I understand the vast majority of you trolls don't have lives and are extremely pathetic, so it's fine. Long story short, he said that I have an old man way of thinking. Well, you know what? Old times for America sounded pretty decent compared to what we got today. And, mm -hmm. you know, our forefathers were interesting cats. And there was a lot of adverse institutions like uh, the Rothschilds and banker, European bankers' interests that had a lot of play in the American Civil War and a lot of horrible things that went on in our country, mm -hmm. that, you know, in the earlier periods like slavery. Absolutely. And, I mean, <clears throat> these individuals like Albert Pike, high-level Freemasonry, mm -hmm. high-level Freemason, 33rd degree, he was one of the leaders of the Confederate Army. You know what I mean? And he was also one of the founders of the KKK. Well, I could go on and on. You know what I mean? With politics and wars and big business and corporation merge. It's all one and the same, guys. Mm -hmm. Rich elitists, the men behind the curtain, just like in The Wizard of Oz. The but once you pull the curtain on these guys, or you catch them in the public restroom, just like they did in Fight Club, an excellent movie with Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. I mean, in in the end of that video, I think they blew up all the... This was in the late 90s, you know, before the big bust of internet to where information is just stored 100% on computers everywhere, all encompassing all around the world. Mm -hmm. The whole premise of this video was they blew up all the, the corporate holdings of information in the credit card business, and that crashed the world's societies in the monetary system because it brought everyone's debt back down to zero. Well, no mm -hmm. one had good credit, no one could get loans anymore. And it was a crazy <clears throat> premise. It's, you know what I mean? I'm not um, advocating anarchy or anything like that. I'm just saying people are always saying they're so hopeless and, you know, things are so hopeless. And there's nothing we can do. The sad thing is, is we're only controlled by a small few. And that's the one thing they don't ever want you to know. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing they got to silence people about from telling you right then and there. What I'm telling you right now. Is these are a small few group of people. They keep everyone ignorant to the fact that they control education. Well, they steal everything from everyone. End of story. They can mm -hmm. be stopped. They're average Joes. You know what I mean? They just yeah. have everything. And they have all the tricks up their sleeves. Absolutely. And they, they keep all these levels of government segmented and fragmented so the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Mm -hmm. Really, they're the only ones. The, the, the ultra-rich are the only ones that really truly understand what is going on. A lot of people in exactly. the government don't even understand how they're being puppeted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if anybody has any questions about that, or they want to do some research on these people that you're talking about, uh, there, there was an interesting bit of information that I ran across uh, about the uh, Bohemian Grove in California, where all these elitists come together once a year for a two-week venture in Bohemian Grove, and they go over all this all these ideas and stuff that they have and it's been proven it's a fact it's a place and what exactly happens there i have no idea never been there 
Probably won't ever get to go there. Richard Nixon really said money. he wouldn't go there because he doesn't want to get naked and dance around in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I I heard that and I thought that was funny because I, I in my course of research, I have run across a bit of information on it. Some of it is extremely interesting, and other stuff is you know kind of fall asleep listening to it kind of stuff, but. They basically have this group of elitists that's puppeteering everybody, and they all get together, and they discuss what's going to happen over the next year in the Bohemian Grove, and they have... And the Bilderberg Grove. Fire and the Trilateral and, Commission. Yeah. There's a lots of different, you know what I mean, groups that are just like what you're talking about right now. But that's an extremely ultra-creepy one, because they... Have a mock sacrifice to an ancient god. Yeah. And it looks like Moloch. A giant you know, the bird. owl. The giant owl. Yeah. And that is representative of, uh, could be a representative of an ancient um, god named Moloch, one of the gods that Jesus was talking about that was unpure that he went around mm -hmm. protesting against, you know, in the Bible at least, it stated that. Because people would sacrifice their children to Moloch. This was not mm -hmm. some 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 wonderful God. I mean, if you want to bash on Christianity and whatnot, nowhere in Christianity are they ever going to tell you to kill your child. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean. So I, this was definitely what I would call an evil religion. I've I've found interestingly enough. I ran across that information that you're talking about, and it says. Well, I, I want to touch on this real fast. It says a lot about our our elitists. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even okay, so they're not saying this. They don't believe in devil. Why are they doing these mock sacrifices, sacrifices. to exactly. an old ancient god in the middle of the woods, and them getting together all talking and making backroom deals? And mm -hmm. we've all heard rumors of gay prostitutes that are called into these places. Yeah. I uh, I remember going over some information on that, and I found it intriguing because a lot of people will argue, okay, with the, the Bohemian Grove thing and the giant owl that they have these mock sacrifices for. I've seen arguments about it on um, they're trying to sacrifice whatever they can for wisdom. Because the owl is supposed to signify wisdom. Well, I kind of wonder, I, I'm not sure if you can enlighten me on this or not, but I kind of wonder, when did the owl become a, signif uh, a signifier of wisdom when, like you were talking about, it was a, a basically like a false god from way back when. And I don't know if you've noticed this recently, but it seems like when I go to places like uh, corporations that suck, like Walmart, you know what I mean? In China, they pay them nothing. They make them pay half of their check for a room to rent when half these people have homes with their uh, families. And there's no way they can get out of paying for this room. They just do it because it's that or starve or die. Mm -hmm. And Walmart takes advantage of them for of this fact. Uh, I could go on and on with all different other horrible things about Walmart, but yeah. Well, we should we should probably get to the point where we start wrapping this up. It's about an hour long show here, buddy, and uh, go ahead and uh, prostitute your channel for the YouTube community out there. Um. Yeah. I I want to first say thanks for having me on your show today. Um. Make sure you uh, check out my channel. Uh, just type in your search bar, Luke Vest. You'll find me. Find some interesting videos that I've posted. Um, make sure, don't forget to like and subscribe to Fritz. I uh, enjoyed this time. Thanks for having me on your show, buddy. Oh, dude, you're more than welcome to come back on. I had a great time, uh, uh, a great time chatting with you. And you're more than welcome to come back on on a later date. Um... And I hope everyone else enjoyed this conversation, too. I, I really have. So, um, again, yes, please do hit my like button and the subscribe button. And if you already are a subscriber, well, then you search. And, ma'am, you totally rock. And I love you to death. And that's why I'm going to start giving away cool things here in the near future. 
I have a GoFundMe campaign that I just started um, with me doing an ex exploration of uh, missing people, cluster areas. Um, I've actually went pretty broke doing that, and I'm not saying I need your guys' money to continue to do this show or to continue to make videos for Fritz Kaobits, because that's not the case. Um, I have a goal of $2,000, realistically, that's how much it's going to cost for passports, uh, for me and two other guys, and to pay for our trips there and back. That's it. You know what I mean? That's all it's going to cover. That's all we want. We already got the camera equipment. And we want to go into the Nahanni Valley of the Headless Men and spend at least five to seven days there in the valley and, and try to find these caverns. I want to videotape everything for you guys. And uh, I'm just really interested. Supposedly up to 55 individuals have disappeared in the last hundred years there. And all of them were found with their heads missing. Intriguing. Yeah, so we'll definitely go there armed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd make sure I videotaped everything, too, so if you're found without your head, at least they'll have your video. Recorded to a live <laughs> feed. So, if you guys, you've seen me ride on Lake Erie and put my life on at risk on a, a great lake where a storm could pick up in 15 minutes and just <laughs> sweep you away. I didn't really realize that until we after we made that trip. But anyway, long story short, this is a campaign to fund, and... Hey, if you don't want to, hey, that's fine. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. But I would like to go check out this area. And unfortunately, I'm not in a financial position where I can unless I have a little bit of help. Even a dollar goes a long way. Well, thanks again for your time and watching my shows and supporting all my stuff, guys. I appreciate you all. Go check out Luke's YouTube channel at Luke Vest. He'll be changing his YouTube channel handle here in the near future to Luke Bulletproof Vest. Yep. Well, guys, have a nice evening.